Most of us are familiar with rabies virus. Although we're more likely to associate rabies with dog bites and wild animals than with neuroscience research. This is because rabies infection is incredibly dangerous and, once symptoms begin, is almost 100% fatal. The virus that causes rabies is extraordinarily specific, efficient, and highly evolved to spread quickly throughout the host, typically beginning with a bite. Rabies infected saliva is introduced in the bite and the virus enters the new host's muscle. From here, the virus replicates and spreads to the innervating neuron, travels up the neuron to the spinal cord, and continues replication and retrograde or backward spread until it reaches the brain. The virus spreads throughout the brain, evading the host immune system and beginning destruction as it travels to the salivary glands, where it can be spread to a new host. This view of rabies is what we see from Cujo to zombie movies. But if we zoom in closer, we can see how rabies' unique efficiency also makes it an important tool for neuroscience researchers. Once in the host, the rabies virus binds to various neuron-related receptors at the neuromuscular junction, including acetylcholine, P75 neurotrophin, and integrin receptors. The virus enters the neuron at the axon terminal and is transported in a retrograde direction up the axon to the cell body. Here, the virus replicates, aided by a very simple viral genome consisting of only five genes. The new virus buds off from the host cell with a glycoprotein, or G, coating. It then spreads up and across chemical synapses to presynaptic axon terminals, where the G protein facilitates entry into new host cells. This cycle continues, leading to progressive infection of presynaptic neurons along a network. The high neurospecificity of rabies virus and its predictable retrograde transport make it an ideal tool for studying neural networks. And this is an area that can be incredibly hard to study. Within the brain, there are around 20,000 neurons per square millimeter, and they have an astoundingly high level of connectivity. Most neurons have hundreds or even thousands of synaptic connections. While we can stain for markers to show similar types of neurons, and use PET scans to show broader areas of activity, understanding functional connections between neurons and how they're associated with thought or activity is very difficult. This is where our new friend rabies virus comes in. Because rabies is restricted to neuronal spread within a single network, we can use this virus to map neural networks in development, in adulthood, and in cases of aging and disease. But if we just introduced rabies virus to our model, it would present a wide range of problems. Importantly, the virus would spread throughout the brain, and because of that high level of connectivity, your starting neuron, all of its presynaptic inputs, all of their presynaptic inputs, and so on, would just be a mess. So what we have to do is strip this down and look at the neural networks on smaller scales. Then we can put these pieces together to gain a broader understanding. So how do we get that small scale view of the network? First things first, we have to make sure we can actually see the connections in the brain. The wide world of recombinant viruses makes this pretty straightforward. We are able to take the viral genome and insert our own sequence, for instance, a marker like EGFP, so that cells infected with the virus express that transgene. However, if we use EGFP to mark every neuron that the rabies virus infects, we would quickly have a large green blob that might be pretty but wouldn't give us any information about this network. So we take our smaller scale by limiting the spread of the rabies virus. Because the virus uses the surface-exposed glycoprotein to bind to neuron receptors, Removing this G protein from the genome prevents rabies from infecting host cells, limiting the spread. Now when we make our recombinant virus, we can package it into an infectious viral particle that has the glycoprotein. It can infect a neuron, turn it nice and green, but any virus that gets produced using the recombinant genome cannot spread. But that doesn't really help us decipher that network. If we give that initially infected neuron, or primary neuron, the G protein, it can gift it to the newly formed rabies virus. 
we can use an AAV to introduce the G gene in trans to our primary neuron. Then, the rabies virus that gets produced can infect the presynaptic neuron. Once in the presynaptic or secondary neuron, there is no G gene, no glycoprotein, and therefore no further spread of the rabies virus. This setup allows for monosynaptic tracing, or determining all secondary inputs into a target primary neuron. This small-scale perspective provides important context for network structure and function in natural and disease states. The recombinant rabies virus where EGFP replaces the G protein ensures the consistent labeling of secondary neurons when the G protein is provided in trance. However, there is very little selectivity within the primary neurons. Essentially, any neurons within the proximity of the virus that have receptors for this G protein may be targeted. Often, a higher degree of selection is important. For instance, when you want to study monosynaptic inputs of a neuronal subtype like dopaminergic neurons. Luckily, primary neuron targeting is possible thanks to the TVA ENVA system. TVA is a receptor protein found in avian species that is absent from mammals and a highly specific receptor for the ENVA protein. By pseudotyping the rabies virus with ENVA, we can produce a virus that only infects cells expressing TVA. We can achieve the desired specificity and monosynaptic tracing by expressing TVA in the target primary neurons in addition to the G protein. Let's look at an example of how this works. If we want to see all of the monosynaptic inputs into this GNRH neuron, but none of its neighboring neurons, we can use rabies virus pseudotyped with ENVA. To have accurate delivery, we express TVA and G protein in the GNRH neurons we're targeting. And we often have another marker like M-cherry to label the primary neurons themselves. The TVA that's expressed is transported to the membrane, allowing infection by the EGFP expressing rabies virus that's pseudotyped with ENVA. In this primary neuron, EGFP is expressed and new virus is made. The G protein is added to the new virus so that it can spread to presynaptic inputs, which are marked with EGFP, but cannot produce infectious virus particles themselves. Now we have a detailed view of this part of this neural network, and we can not only label, but also modify the synapse using shRNA and overexpression constructs. Recombinant rabies virus has become an invaluable tool for appreciating both structural and functional relationships within the brain. VectorBuilder's offerings for cloning and packaging of recombinant rabies virus means that efficient labeling and modification of synapses is right at your fingertips.